The Sprint Series is down to the last three races of the season, and today we head to the Michigan International Speedway, where today there is a mathematical possibility we could crown Juan Romero the champion, but Nathan Faden does not want that to happen. Only 35 points behind with three races left to go. He knows he has a chance at winning this title if the cards play out correctly. And here at the Michigan International Speedway, it can get very, very wild. It's the Michigan 150 for Sprint Series Night in America. We are here at one of the fastest racetracks of the season, and it's going to be a good one here for 20 laps in Brooklyn, Michigan. Hello everybody, this is AG here, and welcome to the Michigan International Speedway here for Sprint Series Night in America. We are excited for this one here in the Hurst Sprint Series because this racetrack is a heck of a lot of fun. If you saw the Elimination Series race on Monday, you know exactly what I'm talking about. These guys are swapping lanes, slide jobbing each other all over the place here around Michigan. And you just don't know how it's going to go down until the checkered flag flies. Drill alongside Nathan Staplin for the call of this race here today. And Nathan, it has absolutely been a wild season in the Sprint Series, but Juan Romero has essentially been atop pretty much this entire season. What does he need to do here today to clinch that championship? He's got to make 18 points on Nathan Faden to clinch him. If he leaves this race with a 53-point lead or higher, he gets him. You think he's going to be able to do it in that 87 starting in the 10th position here today? Well, that's going to be a, t a tall task for that team to get the job done to one Romero. Uh, four wins already this season, but in order for him to clinch it here today, I believe he would have to finish top five and have fans finish towards the back to get those 18 points to clinch. So, it's not a huge chance for him to clinch it too a silly, but there is a chance. But uh, I don't think he's going to do it. Uh, I think it's going to come down to net, net sweet at least, but... What do I know? Uh, Michigan is a crazy race track, like you said, and uh, have to see what happens here for the Sprint Series for race early on the season already, and see if we can win here at one of the fastest tracks on the schedule. It's going to be an interesting one here from Michigan, no doubt about it. And hey, we saw two wrecks in the same 20 lap length in the Elimination Series race. On Monday, we could see the same thing here today play out as well. So, going to be fascinating to see what these drivers end up pulling off. But we know that this championship battle could end here today. And here's how they line up in the point standings coming into this, the 30th race of the season. It's a 35-point lead for Guan Romero on Nathan Faden. Of course, Faden is the guy who has the best opportunity. But Corey Case is still there as well. Things get really wild but he's 51 points behind coming into this one and starting relatively deep in the field in that 99 machine. Don't think he's going to have quite the opportunity to really win this championship at this point. Santiago Labrito is 62 behind. Dylan Matthews, 68 behind. And Chris Reynolds, 71 behind right there. Brandon Nelson, 76. Christian Masters, 77. They all still have a mathematical chance but it's essentially going to take them winning these next three races and Romero finishing last in the next three races for them to have any chance. And then, of course, you have Faden and Case in the mix as well. And, of course, if anybody leaves this race with a 53-point deficit or more, they are mathematically eliminated from championship competition. So it's going to be interesting to see if Juan Romero can do it here today. If not, next week at Daytona. That's the big wild card, though, because Daytona can go any which way. And then the finale at Darlington... We all know what happened in the Sprint Series there last year when Sam and Austin came into that race with a 10-point lead on Avery Alford and wrecked himself out. And Avery Alford ended up getting that Sprint Series title last year, so we'll have to see how it all ends up shaking out if we still end up with a championship battle going in the Darlington. But we got to get through this one first. We're here in Michigan, and we're ready to get these guys to roll off here in the Michigan 150. We got Vinny Scholes in the 93 starting on the pole position. She had the fastest lap there at the Richmond Raceway last week, and alongside Chris Reynolds there in the 52 machine. We got the 5 of Santiago Labrito, the 57, this week driven by Angel Olvera, looking for her second win of the season. You got Dylan Matthews in the 39, the 59, or 55, I should say, of Skylar Taylor. Duncan Ward is in the 69 alongside the 90 machine of Matt Black, who's still going for his first win here in the Sprint Series. 
92 machine there. That is Brandon Nelson alongside the 87 of Guan Romero. We got the 25 of Carson Miller to the inside of B.B. Ruiz in the 13. Nathan Faden in the 1 to the inside of the 88 machine of Baltazar Steep. You got the 4 machine. That's Leonard Koshmar, our last winner here in the Sprint Series. Got the win in Richmond a week ago to the inside of Anthony McClure. 64 machine, that is Stuart Gratton to the inside of Corey Case. Christian Master to the inside of the 80 machine of Josh Harmon. We got the 02 machine there. That is Michael Lewis back behind the wheel. His first start in quite a while here in the Sprint Series. To the inside of the 50 machine there of Herzl, and Alonzo. And then we got Andrew Williams in the 53 and the 96 of Connor Fox. That is how they line up here for the Michigan 150. Let's go ahead and get these guys to roll off here from the Michigan International Speedway. And these guys are going to roll off here for 20 laps here at the Michigan International Speedway. Nathan, very strong field as always up front, especially with Vinnie Scholes leading this field. And hey, next week she's going to start defending her championship in Lenovo. Now the Lenovo Pro Series over there. So you think she's going to get her? Will it be somebody else going to victory lane here in the Michigan 150? Well, I think it's going to be a crazy one. And I think it's going to get a little bit wild. So because of that, I'm going to go with a... A little bit of a bold shot. I'm gonna go with that black and green number 90 of Matt Black to get the job done here today. Now, if there's anyone who can be picked by, Nathan's the one that you want, if, in case you're concerned about the commentator's curse. Because you've gotten yeah, it right before it. this season. <laughs> you've gotten it right before. So, Matt Black, he's been close so many times. Seven top fives in the ten starts he has had this season. He's finished top five 70% of the time he has run here in the Sprint Series this year. So, we'll have to see if he can get it done. We'll have to see what Guan Romero can do there in the 87 machine. If he can move up or if Faden can keep this championship battle going into Daytona next week. It's going to be a fascinating battle in that regard. It's going to be a fascinating race. These guys are going to be sliding around all over the place. And we're excited for this one. It's going to be a lot of fun. Vinny Scholes and Chris Reynolds. Chris Reynolds. Won the Michigan 100 here two years ago. That race will be on Friday. We're excited for that. But we're excited for this one as well as we're green flag racing here in the Sprint Series at Michigan. Chris Reynolds going to utilize the outside lane to his advantage. Here comes Angel Olvera looking to the inside for the race lead, but it's going to be Chris Reynolds who's looking for his third win of the season here in the Sprint Series. He's going to lead lap number one. They're four wide. Duncan Ward going all the way to the apron down the front stretch, and they're going to be four wide going into the corner here. Well, I can look on the straightaway, but in the corners it's a little bit more sketchy. Four wide in the back with Brian Nelson. And a handful of others, but meanwhile, up towards the front is the 57 of Oveil to the race lead. And how about Matt Black? You on AG the channel? I have a very good success rate at picking the right winner, and Matt Black all the way up into the top three. And look at this racing two and three wide, all kinds of different grooves, and this is gonna be a fun one here for this series. And Nathan Faden, he's got to get going now because Guan Romero has already found himself in the top five. Reynolds looking to cross back over on Olvera for the race lead. And he's gonna try to have a nose to the inside. Not quite enough and Olvera keeps it out front in the 57. Skyler Taylor on the outside lane here. And how about this 87 machine of Guan Romero looking for his fourth, no, his fifth win of the season, excuse me. Forgot he won Indianapolis not too long ago here in the Sprint Series. Looking to clinch this championship here today. He would love to celebrate this title two races ahead of time. We're still early on here in Michigan. Nathan Fain trying to claw his way back up to the front. And currently in the 12th position. So right now, Romero has not clinched the championship. He does not have a position right now where he has clinched it. But he does have nearly three wide for the race lead ahead of him right there. As Skyler Taylor went down to the inside of Reynolds and Olvera. Not enough grip down there for those guys. There's a lot of grip in that middle line, and that's why these guys run that line. But there's also some grip there just below that middle line. And Chris Reynolds going to try to use that to his advantage and take the race lead away here on lap number four. 
Wills has been twined the last couple of laps and almost made it three wide through the middle. Just last lap, but now side by side all by himself alongside Obeda for the race lead. Obeda slides oh up boy. a little bit. Romero oh might make boy, it three here he comes. wide. <laughs> and they are going to be three wide for the race lead. What a move there out of Juan Romero. He wants the title today. And he split the middle three wide in an attempt to take the race lead. He might have enough grip up top to get to the 52. And it looks like he will stay alongside. And they're going to be side by side on lap number five right here. And it's going to be Juan Romero getting a bonus point towards the championship for leading that lap. What a move out of the 87. Looking for his fifth win of the season. Matt Black is here. Vinny Schultz trying to get back on the inside lane. Nathan Fain still stuck in the middle right here, trying to close his way back in as Chris Reynolds will clear. Well, he'll attempt to clear, but he didn't quite clear Romero there for the race lead as all these guys are right on each other up front here on lap number six. Well, if you want a preview for potentially what we might see in, in the Wild World Cup Series this weekend, well, this well, might be we're going to do the same thing. So we right through the middle from Romero trying to copy and paste of what one male did. Not quite. Matt Black still in his midst, and we're only on lap 7 of 20, oh, and this has been fantastic racing. You now, Vale wants the race lead. Romero slides up way high, and that's going to allow Ophelia to take the race lead. And Angel Oliveira back out front, won the opening race of the season at New Smyrna Speedway. This ain't anything like a short track, the way these guys race here. And it's definitely a lot of fun. And hey, of course, we've got ourselves the Culver's, Culver's 400 on Saturday in the Wall Wall Cup Series. That is going to be a pivotal race towards that championship. And who knows how that race is going to play out. I mean, last year, Drew Webb pretty much led every single lap and blew a tire on the last lap while leading the race. Anything is possible here in Michigan. And uh, you're not safe until that checkered flag flies above your head. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Here you go. Here's your pick to win, Matt Black. With a huge run to the inside of Angel Oliveira for the race lead. Guan Romero is now in a battle with Laborito for the third position. Chris Reynolds slipped back a little bit. And here comes Nathan Faden in the one. Trying to work his way through this field. Trying to get to that 87 to Guan Romero. Look at the way they're racing ahead of him. they got to be careful not to get caught up in anything because you get taken out here. Especially if you're Romero or Faden. That is going to have huge championship implications going into these last two races of the season. Leonard Koch, we're trying to move his way through the field. Trying to get two in a row. Here in the Sprint Series, he's currently inside the top 10, trying to get to the inside of Faden for that position right there. As three wide for the race lead. Oh Juan Romero, Angel goodness. Olvera, and Matt Black. And Olvera almost got in the black right there ahead of those guys. I tell you, they keep on going three wide for the lead like that. They're bound to wreck at some point. I have to agree. The way that <laughs> Look at that, they're doing it again. Three wide right through the middle again for Matt Black. That is the move here today for the Sprint Series drivers. Just fell three wide through the middle. And it'll work out for you, Matt Flat. Uh, probably feeling pretty good that I picked them. Uh, I have a good track record here on HE, the channel, when it comes to that. Trying to get another <laughs> win for me. As it comes to 69, of Duncan Ward out of the through the middle. This is fantastic racing, Alex. And Duncan Ward got the win at Chicagoland earlier this season. We've already seen way more lead changes in this race than we did in that one. But this might fit Duncan's style. This... High speed, whip it around the corners here. And lose a spot there, though, to the 87 of Guan Romero, who is still in this fight for the top position. Meanwhile, Faden has faded back just a little bit in the one machine. Still battling with Skylar Taylor, Baltazar, Steep, E.B. Ruiz in the middle of the pack right here, but all these guys still right on each other in this event. Chris Reynolds trying to take the lead away from Matt Black. Olvera back to the inside as well, and Olvera's got a good shot on Reynolds for the top position again. These guys are right on each other. Dylan Matthews and both are steep side drafting each other down the backstretch here. And Corey Case, his opportunity to the championship may end here today the way he's currently running right now. Not at all the place you want to be with Romero running where he is. And like I said, 53 points is the margin that Romero can clinch the title. But if anyone is that amount behind the points leader, then they are eliminated from championship contention going into the last two races. Matt Black, Chris Reynolds, and it's Matt Black looking back to the inside of Chris Reynolds and almost getting oh. into Chris Reynolds there, but he was able to save it. They're side by side for the lead, and all these guys, I say anyone from the 13 on up, have a very good chance of winning this race the way they've been running here today. 
Oh yeah, I 100% agree with you. Right now, the top 10 has a, a really good shot at the race win. And we've seen so many faces up front and it is not over yet. Just past halfway with 8 laps to go. Matt Blatt gonna go for the race lead. They're almost gonna go full wide for I believe the 4th position. They settle back down and make it 3 wide. Juan Romero trying to get rid of the 5 as the 5, speaking of the 5, gets sideways and 1 and 2. But, but luckily gonna keep it straight. And how about the 88? Making some moves up front and same with, I believe that's still 2. Of Michael Lewis up one as well. Michael Lewis back. He got a win at Circuit of the Americas earlier this season. Back in that 0 2 machine for this race. And I tell you what, Nathan Faden, he is not liking what he's seeing right now. He is slipping further and further back as Juan Romero is still in this top five. But I would watch out for this guy, Duncan Ward in the 69. Now up to second, a battle for second right there as Chris Reynolds takes the lead back away from Matt Black. And now Duncan Ward's up to the second spot and Romero had to slip back up there a little bit on that inside lane, trying to rebound, trying to get as far away from Faden as he can, but Faden's now coming back on that one machine. He's getting a lot of runs in the middle of the pack right here and these guys are just simply all over the place on this racetrack here today in Michigan. But Chris Reynolds has essentially been First or second this entire race. He has been up in this battle pretty much the whole race. And right now, he's got to fend off his teammate. But Duncan Ward's coming on that inside lane. Five and a half laps to go here in Michigan. And Duncan Ward looking to take it away from the 52 of Chris Reynolds. The only reason has been basically the team to beat here today at Michigan. And a lot of players, but like I said, that 52 of Chris Reynolds has been up for, for the majority of it. As now it's to make a Duncan Ward to the race the lead, almost for wide back there. But right now I don't think Juan Romero is going to clinch it today. But I think he's got a really good chance of maybe clinching at Daytona. If the cars fall in his favor at that wild 2.5 mile speed right next week. We're just going to have to see how it ends up shaking out. Nathan Faden is it's just not been able to get outside behind the top 10 right here and he is still stuck behind these guys in 12th good thing for him is that Romero is a little ways behind as Matt Black looks to get the race lead here on Duncan Ward and 90 Machine doesn't have any help though and Duncan's gonna stay out front with four laps to go here in Michigan Chris Reynolds Angel Oliveira Vinny Schultz is back up here as well in the 93 machine and here comes Reynolds looking back to the inside for the race lead it seems to me, and we saw this in the Elimination Series race, that being the race leader at this racetrack is a major deficit on either the tires or the aero or what have you. And you seem to go a lot faster and have a much better entry into the corner if you're running second. Look at this. Three wide there for fourth right behind all of this. And Duncan War was able to slipstream back to second as Reynolds takes the lead back away. How about Baltazar steep to the inside of the 90 and the 57. Matt Black still in the center and Duncan Ward back to the inside for the race lead. These guys, they're going to have to really be careful not to get involved in the wreck here. They've done an excellent job here today not getting into each other. I don't think there's really been any contact in this race. And I tell you what, Romero slipping back on that inside lane. Nathan Faden, B.B. Ruiz on that outside lane. They're trying to get to that 87, and you know what? Faden might actually surpass the 87 in this race the way it's going. But Duncan Ward trying to hold off Chris Reynolds. Now two laps to go here in the Michigan 150, and these two drivers have pulled away a little bit from the rest of the field, but it's far from over here in Michigan. Two laps is still four miles and four miles of chaos. Faden almost on to the eighth one and one and two. That's not gonna uh, work out to go for him. Dwayne Racing one two. And it might come down to these two teammates. I don't know if Matt Black, my pick, is gonna get the win, but it looks like probably get a top five finish. How about the number 05 of Anthony McClure Twilight Racing inside the top five out of nowhere? But meanwhile, it's the white flag and it's Dwayne Racing one two. At Michigan and Chris Reynolds takes the white flag but will he be able to hold off his team in a Duncan Ward Duncan's got a shot right here and just like it has been all race long the race leader has overshot turns one and two and now Duncan Ward to the inside for the race lead 
Angel Oliveira, Matt Black, Anthony McClure, they're all fighting for that last transfer spot into the cup race on Saturday. Will Duncan Ward be able to hold these guys off? Oliveira going to try to get a run on the inside, but Duncan's got the middle lane, and I think he's got it. Duncan Ward in the 69, and he get his second win of the season here in the Sprint Series. He wins the Michigan 150. And it's going to be Chris Reynolds, Angel Olvera, and Matt Black in Saturday's Cup race. And Juan Romero's not going to clinch the title. He finishes two positions ahead of Nathan Fain. It'll be a 30-38 point lead because Romero did lead a lap in this race. A 38 point lead going into Daytona. Corey Case is not going to have a chance at the title here in the Sprint Series. Just not close enough to get to those guys, and his championship hopes have ended here today at Michigan. But how about your race winner, Duncan Ward in the 69, and this time we actually get to call it. When he won at Chicago Lamb, the OBS had a skill issue, and we never got to really truly congratulate him on that race victory. Well, now he's got two of them. And, hey, that's exactly what Duncan would love to see going into the Truck Series where he's going to be full-time this season. That starts next Thursday at Daytona. How about Duncan Ward right there? A great run and a second win of the season in the Sprint Series. 96 machine, Connor Fox with the fastest lap. If he makes the sign-ups for Daytona, that's where he'll start in that race. Christian Master back in there, the 80 machine of Josh Harmon. They're all over the place in terms of the fastest lap, but Duncan Ward got fifth right there. And Juan Romero in the 87. Got the ninth quickest time. Faden got 16th, so Romero's going to be roughly about seven positions ahead of Faden into Daytona with a 38-point lead, so he hasn't clinched it yet. It's going to be interesting to see how that ends up shaking out. But what a run for Duncan Ward in this one here in Michigan. And after what you saw here today, are you looking forward to Saturday's race or are you looking forward to Saturday's race? I'm looking forward to Saturday's race. <laughs> that was absolutely fantastic. Michigan always puts on a banner. But I'll see him in caution for you. And then, well, Drew is not going to be happy for me today, but he blew a tire on the last lap. So anything can happen. Yeah, and we saw fantastic racing all day long. Matt Black, my pit, did not win. But hey, he gets to make a cup start, so there's that for him. Um, Ward with the win. Winners in second at one-two for Duwani. Fantastic race. Not for winners racing, unfortunately. With Brian Nelson finishing in dead last. But uh, that's besides the fact, a great one here today. And that's a preview for what we see for the Wild World Cup Series here. On Saturday, then I'm very, very excited for what we see late in the season in the Wild Wild Cup series. It's going to be a good one on Saturday in the Culver's 400. But before that, we've got the Michigan 100 in IndyCar on Friday. And, uh, hey, Caleb Rose, our guy Caleb Rose, won that race last year. Well, this year he's going to be calling and running the race. So uh, he's really moved on up in the world after that Michigan 100 win. It's going to be a very interesting race. They only got two races left there in IndyCar and a very close championship battle between Bradley Bradshaw, Thomas Troxell, and Logan Williams. And it's going to be fascinating to see how it ends up shaking out with all those guys up front in that one on a high-speed super speedway like this. And they only got Michigan and Pocono left too, so two of the fastest tracks they go to there in the IndyCar series coming up. It's going to be a lot of fun. But like I said, Saturday at noon Eastern time, it's the Culver's 400. That was the race of all time last year when Drew Webb blew a tire on the last lap. Will we see something like that again? Probably not. That was a once-in-a-lifetime thing. <laughs> and it's going to be a very interesting race considering how close those points are over there in the Wall Wall Cup Series. You see the starting lineup there for that race on the side of your screen. Watch out. 50 laps, a cycle of pit stops, and it could very well go caution-free as well, just like this race did here today. But thank you guys so much for watching. A huge thanks to Nathan Stablin for joining me here today. And we only got two races left in the Sprint Series, but one thing we also do have, and I think you guys signed up for it last night, is the Lenovo Pro Series coming up. That is Caleb Series for the fall. And signing for that, I think, happened last night for their opener at Daytona. But we've got the 2030 first race of the season. I almost said 29th race of the season, but the 31st race of the season for these guys at Daytona. Sign up for that coming up in just a couple minutes. Thank you guys so much for watching. Once again, congratulations to Duncan Ward. And here are the points for the Her Sprint Series after 30 races. I will see you guys later.